You get sent two Excel files, a version one and a version two. When you open them, they look very similar. So how can you find the differences between them? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that for two separate Excel worksheets, as well as for two separate Excel files. So let's get into it. Over here, we have this Excel table and you'll notice that we have a version one and a version two. And suppose we want to find the differences between them. For this, the first thing would be to set it all up so we can see both of them side by side. For this, we can head over to the View tab and click on New Window. You'll notice that this creates a version 2 of the exact same file. All we need to do now is go to View again and click on Arrange All. From here, we want the vertical arrangement, so it's going to create a split screen and click on OK. What we've done here is we have the exact same Excel file, so if I change this value over here to a zero, you'll notice that this side changes too. The only thing is we can now see it side by side. So on this one, we can be on V1, and on this other one, we can be on V2. And to follow along with the same Excel file, you can use the link in the description below to download it for free. Now that we're all set up, I'll show you three different ways that you can find the differences between the two sheets from easy to advanced. And first up, we have the count if formula. So let's take a look. You'll notice that on both the V1 and the V2, we have the order IDs, which should be unique. So if these aren't unique, we can identify that. And that's one of the key differences. For this, we can use the equals count if formula. Hit the tab key there and the range is all of our order IDs. We can select them with control shift down. Let's also lock them so when we move the formula down, they don't move down by pressing the F4 key that gives them the dollar signs, comma, and the criteria is that they need to be equal to this sides. If that's the case, we'll close a parenthesis and hit enter. And now if it says a one, that means that it's matching. But if it says a zero, it's going to mean that there's a difference there. I'll drag this all the way down. And it looks like row number six is different. If we take a look at this ID here and compare it to this other one, you can see the values are indeed different. This method isn't perfect though, and that's because it's only considering the order ID. It doesn't really consider whether this row with the manager, the country, or the sales are any different. So let me show you a better method. An intermediate level alternative could be to use a conditional formatting with a formula. So let's take a look. We have the same table over here, and we're just going to select it all with Control A. Once that's selected, we'll go to conditional formatting new rule and we'll go all the way to the bottom use a formula and the idea is that we want to select this first cell in the table b2 for us remove the dollar signs so it's dynamic and it can move by pressing the f4 key three times there and we want that to be not equals to the one on version 2 which we have to the right hand side and again we'll remove the dollar signs from there the idea is that if these two aren't equal that means there's obviously a difference between them. So we want to format it differently in a way that stands out. Like let's say in an orange color and click on OK. Now you can see that all of these in yellow are currently not matching. So row six over here, if we take a look, it also is a matching. And unlike the count if, this one also works for the other columns like the manager, country or sales. And it's fully dynamic too. If I change this side to Italy, then all of a sudden that conditional formatting is gone as it's matching to the version 2. Both the count if and the conditional formatting methods that we just saw don't actually show the two values side to side to compare. Let's go over an advanced method to do exactly that. For this, we're back in the original file that has a V1 and a V2 and we'll create a new sheet. And within it, what we'll do is only show the two options whenever there's a difference between the two sheets. So for this, we'll type equals if, hit the tab key, and the logical test is firstly that the V1, so this value right here, that's our first one, in version one, cell B2, has to be equals to version two, cell B2, comma. If those values are matching, well, then we can just show any of the two because they're going to be the same. So I'm saying to just show the one in V2, comma. That said, if false, meaning they're not matching, 
then we need to show both options, the version 1 and the version 2 option. So in quotations here, we'll put for V1, let's put a colon, space, close the quotations, and then we need to link it to the actual V1. We'll do that by adding an ampersand, and let's go to V1 and select that B2 cell. So we're saying this is going to be the answer that shows up for version 1. And now we need to add the answer for version 2. We'll do that by adding another ampersand. And in quotations, we'll put something like versus. We'll put a space versus space. This is the V2 option, colon there, space and a quotation to close that. And another ampersand. And now we need to link it to the actual V2 answer, which is right up here. I can close the parenthesis and hit enter. For now, because this is matching fine, I just get the order ID and it should be the same across all of the headers. But when I drag this down, let's suppose somewhere around here and let me just resize this with Alt H O I. That's the same as going to format and auto fitting the column widths. You can see here that whenever there isn't a match, I get both options. So the version one option is this figure versus the version two option, which is this other figure. I don't need this bottom row, so I'm just going to delete that one. But now you get the idea of how this works. If you don't really like the BS in, the, in between, we can switch that to something like adding a dash, hit enter, and to copy the same formula across, we can just control shift down, control shift right, control D to drag it down, and control R to drag it to the right. Now you can see instead of a versus, we have that dash between the two options. Make sure you stick around until the end for a surprising bonus feature very few people know about. But first, if you want to learn Excel fast and efficiently, you can consider checking out our Excel for business and finance course. And what makes this course different is that it's all applied to the real world. While we still cover theoretical lessons like formatting, formulas, and charts, we also offer case studies that simulate the type of work you might be assigned in your day-to-day, -day, ranging from financial modeling to cleaning a real data set and presenting some visual insights. We also offer several other courses, including Power BI, Finance and Valuation, and much more. So if you're interested, head over to the link in the description below. So far, we've been comparing two different sheets within the same Excel file but if you want to compare two separate Excel files, here's how. You can see right here I have a version 1, and in a separate Excel file I have a version 2. We somehow want to compare these two. For that, it's fairly similar. Just by pressing the plus sign, we'll use the same if statement again. This time I'm going to go a bit faster, as I've shown it already. And the logical test is that this figure right here, so B2, has to be equals to this other one in this separate sheet you can see it's called file2.xlsx so it's a separate excel file entirely we want to get rid of those dollar signs though so it remains dynamic comma and the value if true we simply want to select the b2 as that means there's gonna be a match so it makes no difference comma and for the value if false in quotations we'll put that the v1's answer close the quotations add an ampersand would be just this figure right here ampersand again now we need the v2 so we're gonna put a dash to compare and we'll also put the v2 answer would be space close the quotations ampersand and it would be this figure just up here again let's get rid of those dollar signs like so and finally we can close up parenthesis and hit enter so we get the order id and we can make this side full screen now I'm just going to drag it along all the way to row 18 and drag it sideways as well. Let me auto fit that with Alt H O I and you can see we get the exact same format with the changes but this time we're comparing two different Excel files. I'd say this is a pretty elegant way to go about it but in this bonus section I want to show you a built-in method that very few people know about and actually if you take a look over here there's what's known as a spreadsheet compare within your computer. Let's go ahead and open that one up. You'll get a separate window looking like this. And what we want to do is go to compare files. Here, we just want to upload the two files that we have available. So it might be the version one and the version two for me. 
I'm just gonna go over to desktop and select them. One is my file one and the other one is just my file two and click on open. Then I can just click on okay and I'm gonna start to see the differences between them. You can see it's highlighted here in green all of the parts that are different between the two options. And over on the left hand side, I can filter by what type of difference I want. In my case, let's say I'm only looking for a difference in values. So that's all that it's gonna select over here. Awesome, so that's a cool feature that you probably didn't know. If you wanna learn to sell reference properly, which is one of the harder things in Excel, check out this video over here or take our Excel course over here. Hit the like and the subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.